Lesson 4-2. Factor and solve polynomial equations. A manufacturer of shipping cartons who needs to make cartons for specific use often has to use special relationships between the length, the width, the height, and volume to find the exact dimensions of the carton. Yeah, you can use polynomial equations to solve this. So we're going to look at how factoring can be used to solve equations. We've already factored quadratic equations, so this is just expanding on factoring. First step, this is always the first step. Look for the greatest common factor. That's the same thing that's in each of the terms. Just factor that out. So the same number of variables in each of the terms, you can bring that number to the front times everything that is left. For example, these all have an x, they all have a y, but they also all have a 3 because this is 2 times 3 and 3 times 3, so they each have a 3. So if I bring out the 3, the x, and the y, what's left? Well, the first one, the 3 is gone. One of the x's is gone. The other is still there. The y is factored out. Second group from the 6, I factored out a 3, leaving the 2. But I factored out the x and y, so they're both gone. Third term from the 9, I factored out a 3, but there's still a 3. Factor out the x and one of the y's, leaving the other y still there. Look for the greatest common factor first. Always check for it first. I may forget to mention it, but I am always checking for that first. Step two, count the number of terms. If there are two terms, you're going to use formulas, and here are the formulas. You have a difference of squares. A squared minus B squared is A minus B times A plus B, such as 9x squared minus Y to the fourth. That would be the same thing as 3x squared minus Y squared squared. So the A is the 3x and the B is Y squared. So it's A minus B, A plus B. We can do the sum of two cubes. A cubed plus B cubed is A plus B. A squared minus AB plus B squared. You might want to memorize these formulas. These formulas you probably want to memorize. All right, 8 and 27 are perfect cubes. First part becomes 2x cubed, and 27 is 3 cubed. So the A is 2x, and the B is 3. So it's A plus B. A squared minus a times b. 3 times 2 would be 6, and b squared is 9. Or the difference of two cubes. Same idea, we have just flip-flopped that plus and minus. This would be like y cubed minus 2 cubed, so a is y, b is 2, so it is a minus b a squared plus a b plus b squared. Memorize those formulas. Still on step two, but if there are three terms, you use a general trinomial. We've already done this with the quadratics. So write two sets of parentheses, you guess and check. You guess the first to make the a s squared, so it's here and here. You guess the last to make C. So the first make the first, the last make the last, and then you check the outers plus the inners and see if it makes the middle. Let's try seven x or x squared plus seven x plus ten. Oh, check for the greatest common factor. Oh, there's not one. All right, so we have. To get the x squared, it would be x and x 
to get the 10 might be 2 and 5. Then we check. That would be 5x plus 2x is 7x. Hey, that is the middle, so we have factored correctly. Check for greatest common factor. There isn't one. To get 6x might be 2x and 3x. 20. 20 might be 5 times 4. So let's try it. It's negative though, so let's try a negative 5 and a positive 4. Outers would be 8x. Inners would be negative 15x, which is negative 7x. That is the middle, thus we have factored correctly. If there are four terms, we're still in step two, but now we're at four terms, we try grouping. You group the terms into sets of two, so you can factor out a common factor from each set. Then you factor the factored sets. All right, so we're going to group now here's a minus. Keep the minus with the numbers so there's always a plus between the two groups. Because plus and minus is the same thing as minus. We really want a plus between the groups. From the first group I can factor out a b squared, leaving b minus 3. From the second group I can factor out a negative 4, leaving b minus 3. Now, from those, you can factor again. You can factor out the b minus 3, leaving b squared minus 4. And now we have factored by grouping. Oh, but notice something. This is jumping ahead, but b squared minus 4 is two terms. It's a difference of squares because 4 is 2 squared, so it's b minus 3, b minus 2, B plus 2. So step 1 was look for the greatest common factor. Step 2 was count the terms and factor however that's told you to. Step 3 is try factoring more. You know you're done factoring when there's no more squares or, you've, or you have tried to factor everything with squares or cubes. No more exponents. That's how you know when you're done. All right, this is greatest common factor. There isn't one. There's not an A or B or X or Y in everything. So we're going to group because there are four terms. Four terms is grouping. First group, I can factor out an X, leaving A squared minus B squared. Second group, you can factor out a Y, leaving A squared minus B squared. Now you can factor out the a squared minus b squared because that's in both. So when I factor out of the first, I'm left with x. When I factor out of the second, I'm left with y. So, And then a squared minus b squared is a difference of squares. Which is a minus b, a plus b. Let's factor this one. Look for the greatest common factor. Well, I see a 3 and a z. So 3z is a squared minus, well, 27 divided by 3 is, th is 9. So it's 27 is 3 times 9. If I factor out the 3, I'm left with the 9. And the z was factored out. Now we try factoring more. The a squared minus 9 has a square, we can try factoring it. It's a difference of squares because 9 is 3 squared. a squared minus b squared is a minus b, a plus b. So we'll have a minus 3, a plus 3. There's no more square, uh, exponents, so we're done factoring. All right, let's try this one. Into the fourth minus 81. 
there's no greatest common factor. There are two terms, so it is a special pattern. But eh, to the fourth power? We didn't have a formula for that. Mm, but we do, because it's the same thing as n squared squared minus 9 squared. So that's a difference of squares again where the a is n squared and the b is 9. So it's a minus b, a plus b. And then we try to factor some more. n squared minus 9, 9 is 3 squared. So again, that's a difference of squares. So it would be n minus 3, n plus 3. And then the second part here, n squared plus 9 is a sum of squares. But wait. There is no formula for a sum of squares. You actually cannot factor a sum of squares. So it's unfactorable, and that is our answer. So let's solve equations by factoring. Well, to do that, first of all, you make the whole thing equal to zero. You factor, then you use the zero product property. You make each factor equal to zero, because if one factor is zero, Zero times anything is zero. So make the whole thing equal zero, factor, each factor equals zero. So let's solve this equation. First thing, make it equal to zero. So we'll subtract the 18x from both sides. That's to the fifth, not second. All right, now let's factor out the greatest common factor. It should be a two. 18 is 2 times 9. So I can factor out a 2 and an x. The first group I would have uh, x to the fourth left. The second group I'll have a 9 left. Let's try factoring more. Well, the x to the fourth minus 9 would be x squared squared minus 3 squared, so that's a difference of squares. So it'll be x squared minus 3, x squared plus 3. Try factoring more. Oh, it looks like a difference of squares. Oh, except for 3 is not a perfect square. So now you take each factor equal to zero. Get x is zero. Get x squared is three. Square root with plus and minus. I get x is plus and minus square root of three. Subtract the three. Square root with the plus and minus. So I get x is plus and minus square root of negative three. Right, don't forget the i's, that would be square root of 3, i. So we have five answers. We have 0, we have square root of 3, negative square root of 3, square root of 3, i, and negative square root of 3, i. If you plug those in, they'll work.